Hello, my name is John Byrne, and I'm excited to welcome you to this special presentation of Senior Station, made possible by the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. Senior Station is a program for people of all ages and abilities to enjoy movement and storytelling. We start here in our train station and we go all over the world. As I share stories with you, I welcome you to follow along with my movements. Today, we're gonna to be dancing with a bandana, but you can use a scarf or a napkin if you like, or you can just dance along without the prop. You can pause the video at any time or go back if you wanna try something again. Well, here she is, climb aboard the Cornwall Express. Today we're traveling to the southernmost tip of South America, to a place full of a palette of colors like copper and beige and tan. Yes, that's right, we are going to Patagonia. But first, let's warm up and you can follow me. Let's start by breathing in and breathing out and breathing in and breathing out. Try it on your own time, slow breathing in and breathing out. You could try it with your eyes closed, breathing in and breathing out. That's right. Just gently look to one side. It doesn't matter which side and gently look the other way. And remember, you can keep breathing in and out slowly. And when you're ready, you can gently look up, lift your chin, and then let your chin just drop into your chest. And you're not forcing anything, you're just letting the weight of your head gently guide. and relax. Bring your arms forward. Don't strain. And we'll open our arms and close our arms. Opening and closing our arms. Just on your own time. Today you may want to go a little bit further than last time, or you may want to hold back, and that's okay. Oh, and we bring our arms up and down. It looks like a V. And we let our shoulders be round. Our shoulders are rolling from front to back. And today, let your hands be heavy. And you can reverse that motion. Shoulders are going back and front. And just let your shoulders wiggle all around. It feels a little bit silly. And now find your center or your belly button and follow me. I'm just going to keep my feet on the ground and make tiny circles with my upper body. And find your center and maybe we can go the other way. and find your center. Let's put our arms together with our center and just be curvy. That's right, there's no particular way to do this, but loosening up your body and your joints really can feel like liquid today. And later on, we're going to the water, the oceans of Argentina. So let's practice that water motion, the waves and the fish swimming deep in that cold, arctic, salt water. My favorite little warm-up, it's so simple, but it's just opening and closing hands, opening and closing our hands. And 
right here, I'm going to start with my pinky and slowly curl my fingers in. Isn't that funny? Starting with my outside fingers and just rolling in. And now reversing that. shaking those hands out and I also like to warm up my wrists gentle circles and then I go the other way just a few more things in our warm-up if you're able you can grab a knee gently and also circle your foot And make it go the other way. Try the other leg and the other foot. Small circles. Yes, that's right. Today we're taking a little more time with our warm up. Just in case we need that extra lift, right? And start to walk in place. One of the great things about being an explorer is going to places where there are no roads. And sometimes we're the first person to create that path. And I'm sure you've done things in your life where you were the very first person to find a new way and create your own path. So we salute you. Okay, I think we're ready. Next stop, Buenos Aires. We start our journey here in the colorful capital of Argentina, Buenos Aires, home of the tango. Tango, let's spell the word. T-A-N-G-N-O. That's right, we love tango, the music of Astor Piazzolla and the accordion. Listen to the tango music and open and close your accordion, pushing the air in and out. And follow along, maybe we dance this way, and we dance that way, and we dance front, and we dance back and pretend you're grabbing your partner, hug yourself, and maybe you dip side to side. That's right. And at the end of the tango, out in the plaza, we clap. And we say, bravo, bravo. That's right. Buenos Aires is home to the tango. It started out on the docks where sailors would get drunk and dance with each other. And then it made its way into popular culture and it's enjoyed all around the world. Now keep in mind the seasons in Southern Argentina, Patagonia are the opposite of what I have or you may have if you live in North America. So if you live above the equator, your summer is when Patagonia is having their winter. So today we're going to get dressed like a gaucho. Put your hat on and maybe pretend to grab a poncho. Put your poncho on and maybe you have a handkerchief like me and you wrap it around your wrist or maybe your neck to stay warm and later we'll grab our lasso but first i think we should have some argentinian food in buenos aires we can find pastries called empanadas and they're filled with cheese or sometimes protein and we can dip them in a sauce do you like ketchup or mayonnaise and try your empanada mm. so delicious or maybe you'd like arroz con leche, which is rice pudding. Try it. Delicious. And sweet, we can say sabor. 
Mm. And sometimes people sprinkle cinnamon on top. Argentinians love tea, and they have a very special kind of tea called yerba mate. They fill up their thermos with this very strong tea, and they put it in their pouch, and they carry it around all day. And they have a little metal straw that they also carry called a bombilla, and they drink their tea throughout the day. Try it. Mmm, delicious. Do you like your tea hot or do you like it cold? Put it away because in Argentina, we're going to continue drinking it throughout the day. Okay, let's stretch. It's time to head south, down into Patagonia. Did you know that the name Patagonia comes from the Portuguese explorer, Magellan? When he first visited this land in the 1500s, he described the people as being giants, and that's where the word Patagonia comes from. In Patagonia, there's a diverse range of climates, from deserts to mountains, glaciers, rocky ocean sides, and even tundra. The population of Patagonia has a very diverse history. There are, of course, native Indians, as well as descendants from England and Spain. In the late 1800s, the Welsh made a significant immigration to Patagonia, and I'm sure anyone who migrated to Patagonia had to adjust very quickly. Our first stop outside of Buenos Aires is the city of Trulu, and it's halfway down the Argentinian coast. We walk out of the train, out into a vast desert, and we see an animal that looks like an ostrich. It's called a great rhea, and his neck goes front and back. Try it. Oh, and maybe your arms are curvy like the great rhea. And when he hides, he puts his neck down. Follow along. We also may see guanacos. They are so elegant and regal looking, and their ears stick straight up. They're related to camels, and they have big eyelashes. Did you know their eyelashes protect them from the sand and wind that blows in the desert? And the guanacos also live up in the mountains, and those eyelashes protect them from the cold winter snow. Guanacos are very fast. Practice running very fast. Maybe your arms just go very fast. Keep going. Guanacos have to be fast because their biggest predator is the puma. Let's run alongside the guanacos. And three. Many dinosaur fossils have been found throughout Patagonia. The desert, as I said, can be very hot. Oh, let's fan ourselves. Or maybe if you're with a friend, you can fan your friend. Help them out. And at night, it can be very, very cold. Maybe like New Mexico or Nevada. <sighs> wiggle, wiggle. Let's pretend like we're painting the terrain of Patagonia. Would you use soft lines or maybe draw some rocks or beautiful mountains? Use your hand and pretend that you are painting the scene. You can also pretend that you're molding it out of clay. Take some time on your own and do that with your hands. That's right. Did you notice that the landscape of Patagonia is very similar to that of the bush in Australia? Well, scientists believe that millions of years ago, Australia and Patagonia were actually one continent during Pangaea. And of course, as the tectonic plates separated, these land masses moved away. Climb up on your bicycle. We're going next to Punta Tambo. It's a peninsula 
just south of Trulu. If you're strong enough, you can lean back and bicycle with me. Otherwise, just let your hands and arms go around. Let's do this for 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and relax. As we arrive at Punta Tombo, we start to walk on the rocky beach. There are small pebbles everywhere and the beach is very gray. We hear seagulls in the distance and they're flying up above the water. Take your two hands and put your thumbs together and we can make a dance of a seagull right here in our chair. It flies up and side to side. The seagulls swoop down and grab krill or fish to eat. Up and down. Follow along and try that with me, up and down. Or maybe you just want to have your seagull fly in its own, own special way. Now Punta Tombo is also home to a famous bird that famously does not fly. That's right, I'm talking about the penguin. Oh, we put our arms out like this and we waddle side to side. Now's a good time. If you'd like to stand up, you can try it standing up. Here at Punta Tombo, we find the Magellan penguins. And remember Mr. Ferdinand Magellan from Portugal? Well, he and his crew spotted these penguins and they named it after Mr. Magellan in 1519. These penguins are so cute and they behave very similar to humans. They love each other and they give each other hugs. And if you can or want to, you can give your neighbor a hug. Just like the penguins. Magellan penguins protect themselves by staying together in groups. And from the sky, predators look down and they see what looks like one large organism. Penguins also swim together in groups which protects them from predators like whales and sharks and seals or sea lions. As they say, safety in numbers. Now my penguin friends, I think it's time to take a break. Should we try some more of our yerba mate? Okay. Take out your thermos and open it up. We put our silver straw inside and drink it. Mmm. Delicious. But guess what happens? Our hands start to shake and our whole body goes zzzz. That's right, the tea in Argentina has a lot of caffeine, so I'm just warning you. <laughs> now, while we're taking a break, I'd like to tell you about this other stunning place. It's located in the northwestern part of Argentina, just outside of Patagonia. You are looking at Cono de Arita and Salar de Arizado, a desert salt bed. Doesn't it just look like a pyramid? The Cono de Arita is actually a natural volcano. The cone stands over 400 feet above the salt bed and its shape is constantly moving with the desert winds. The origin of this pyramid is unknown, but scientists and natives alike believe the pyramid was used for ceremonial purposes before the arrival of the Incas. Now for comparison, let's go back down to Patagonia. We're arriving in the province of Chubut, and this is called the Valdez Peninsula. Here we find the town of Puerto Pyramides. The Valdez Peninsula is a very special place. People come from all around the world to do whale watching and it's a UNESCO protected site where they study the health of the whales and how they relate to the health of the oceans. I see large baleen whales. Try this, cross your arms and open and close. We look like the mouth of a baleen whale. 
Oh, the whales can be gigantic, bigger than a house or a school bus. And sometimes they drop down low into the deep ocean. Make this noise with me. Blub, 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 blub. Come on up. Try it again. Blub, 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 blub. Baleen whales typically pass through this area of the Valdez Peninsula during the warmer months to breed before they head south to Antarctica for the winter. Usually, a small baleen whale calf will spend three months with his or her mother before making that dangerous trip south. They have a large back fin and they splash in the water. Don't be afraid, splash. They like to make a little bit of noise. They breach the water, meaning they jump up and they spin around. Try it again, jump up and spin around. When the night begins to fall, all of the krill those crustaceans, they begin to rise up to the surface of the ocean. That's when the baleen whales come in, they open up their large mouths, and they start to consume all of that krill. They need it for their nutrition. Be the baleen whale eating the krill, maybe some fish and seaweed too. Okay, everyone, hide your eyes because next is a little bit of a sinister story. That's right. The Valdez Peninsula is also home to one of the most tragic and heartbreaking and intense natural phenomenons. Late every year, orcas come from all around the world to the Valdez Peninsula to hunt sea lions. That's right, let's hide. Uh-oh. The sea lions are vulnerable. They're very loud and sometimes they even sound like dogs. And they flap their little flippers. Try it with me. And they make this noise. <laughs> or maybe they flap like this. Try it and maybe you involve your feet. The sea lions are very active, playful, and they get easily distracted. But guess what? Late in the year, those orcas or killer whales start to arrive. Their dorsal fin sticks out of the water and they start to hunt. Be the orca or the killer whale. Now late in the afternoon, as the sea lions are playing and the tide gets high and the moon is pulling the tide in, he swoops in and grabs his dinner. Unfortunately, that dinner is the sea lion. And this is the phenomenon that people travel all around the world to see. Now, that's not something I am interested in watching for entertainment, but it reminds us of how powerful nature is. It's been a long day. We stretch out, we grab our poncho, we put on our sombrero, and we take our handkerchief and maybe we gently wrap it around our neck after wiping off our sweat. We arrive in the Valdez Peninsula at an estancia. Now what's an estancia? It's a ranch, and in the ranch, we find a gaucho. Well, the gaucho is a cowboy responsible for his cattle, and gauchos have a great relationship with their horse. They make dances about the horse riding. It goes like this. Clap, knee, knee. Clap, knee, knee. Clap, knee, knee. Try it with me. Clap. Knee, knee, it goes faster.
a little faster. Oh, we sound like the horses. And we pick up our lasso and we swing it around. On the count of three, let's lasso in a cow. Uno, dos, tres. And pull it in. Try the other arm. Oh, I think my other one was a little stronger. Uno, dos, tres. And pull it in. That's right. Of course, we're speaking Spanish because we are in Argentina. As we look out over the Estancia and this rugged land, we are inspired to make a gaucho dance. I'd like to teach it with you and you can follow me. We're going to use the bandana if you like. If not, you can dance without a prop. You could also use a napkin or a scarf. And if you need to pause the video, you can do that and come back. I'll do the dance standing as well in case you'd like to follow that version. Okay, gauchos, here we go. I start like this. I put my bandana just behind and I rock side to side for eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then I shake one, two, three, four, change hands, five, six, seven, eight. Then I lasso around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then I throw and catch, throw and catch, throw and catch. And if you want to make it a little more tricky, throw, catch. Let's put it all together. Rocking side to side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shake one, two, three, four, change hands five, six, here we lasso, and one, two, three, four, five, six, throw and catch, throw, catch, throw, catch, catch, and there you go. All right, our leg. Should we try it one more time with music? Here we go, a little bit faster. Okay, that was great. Go ahead and put your bandana around yourself like a proud gaucho. And we say gracias. I think you did a great job herding those cows. Friends, again, my name is John Byrne. And it is a pleasure to explore and have fun with you. Join us on many other great adventures with Senior Station. Until next time, gracias and adios.